Time for the KSL In-Depth. Heading to Utah's high country might leave you short of breath, but for some people, a high-altitude hike could also put their lives at risk. The death of a Utah Boy Scout in the Uintas last week is suspected to be because of altitude sickness. Dr. Richard Ingebretson is director of the U's Wilderness Medicine Program. He's joining us live now on the KSL Newsline. We thank you for joining us. It sounds scary. Is that a thing that you can just drop dead from altitude sickness? Well, uh, thank you for uh, having me on the show. I like uh, educating the public about you know the, 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 the beauty and also the the, the dangers that you can find in the backcountry. Most people don't know that you can get sick just by going up in altitude. Rarely below six, 6,500 feet, but once you get about 6,500 feet, you're subjected to two interesting problems. One, for reasons we won't go into, the brain can potentially start to swell. And when it does, you start getting headache, nausea, vomiting. And usually they're mild symptoms, and if you stop and don't go up, they, they can go away and you'll be fine. Then the other one, if you, but if you continue, then the brain can swell to the point where, or if you don't solve the problem, the brain can swell to the point where it herniates, and that will kill you. It doesn't come on like a flash, but it can come on over hours to days, and you have to watch for it. The other one, your lungs can fill with fluid, and a whole other related thing uh, called pulmonary edema, and you can suffocate. And so you have to watch for both of these things, and they do happen. Some people, about one in ten, uh, at a minimum, will develop some signs of one or the other, headache, nausea, vomiting, and then you just need to not go up and or, or go down to where you can feel better or your brain will swell too much. That's cerebral edema or pulmonary edema. Those are the ones. Yeah, it's a very real problem. Doctor, we were comparing our stories in the newsroom earlier about altitude sickness, and it seemed almost everybody had a story. It affects a lot of people, usually with just the headache and the nausea. How do you realize that it's becoming something more serious before you crash? That's called cerebral edema, and if it's just nausea and vomiting, it's, um, uh, it hasn't really progressed to where it's dangerous. They call that just altitude illness or acute mountain sickness. That one, if you don't go up and stop, it, it normally will go away in a couple of hours or a day. You just need to slow down. And then, but the, if it does get worse, you notice it become, be, well, what would, what would you think if your brain gets bigger? You don't have to memorize it. You just, you can't walk, you can't move, you can't speak, you stumble, you lose your coordination. And at that point, it's pretty serious and you need to go down immediately. The cure yeah. is to lose altitude, right? Yes. Uh, to, to the public, go up slowly. Go down quickly. And the same thing with lungs. If you're starting to cough up like frothy sputum, hard to breathe, not just the normal, you're short of breath because you're at altitude, you know, you're exercising, but more than that, more fluid and more frothy stuff can your mouth, go down. Don't wait uh, a minute. Just turn around and go down in the, day, in the not in night or in the rain. The treatment is to go down instantly. And, and the, interestingly, the symptoms recover very, very quickly. Can it affect people? Can it affect people who are hardened hikers, native to Utah, who've lived here all their lives, never had a problem? Suddenly, one day they go up and boom, altitude sickness. Yes, and uh, you know the fact that you're fit and have lived at five thousand feet doesn't matter. We don't. It's hard to predict who is. It affects men and women equally. It affects young people as well as older. The one interesting fact is you get real old, the brain shrinks in size, and they actually don't get as much. It's kind of a curious reversal but because their brain, brain's a little bit smaller. But right, as fit people, uh, people who've lived at altitude can... Here's the key, how quickly you go up. If you go up quickly, and some people will just flash into this, and so we tell people to go up slowly and just watch themselves, and if they get, start getting nauseated, headache, slow down. If they start coughing up putum, so go down, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, and so that one in 10 number I quoted you is a, is, a, is a pretty good number, but some studies in some areas, as high as 50 or even 60% of people who go skiing or get to altitude will get nauseated, get sick, and uh, it's how quickly you go up. Here's this good scenario. Someone's down at sea level, they fly to Salt Lake, and then they go up skiing. So they go from sea level to 10,000 feet in a day, and they get nauseated, headache, and that's altitude illness. And, if, you know, if they watch it and go back down, they'll be safe. But, you know, we go all over the world. We go to the Andes. We go over to the Alps. We go to the Himalaya. Uh, and people should educate themselves about altitude illness. It's the, remember, the brain swells and your lung fills with fluid. 
cerebral edema, pulmonary edema, and just slow down. Go up slow, go down quick. That's the answer. Doctor, we thank you so much for the education after this puzzling, scary story from the Uintas. Dr. Richard Ingebretson joining us live from the University of Utah's Wilderness Medicine Program.